Hello everybody, welcome back to Lawrence Plays Black Mesa. So, this has been an episode with a couple of screw-ups already. Turns out the um, the actual release version of um, Black Mesa came out while between episodes, and that was not save compatible, so I've lost my previous saves progress, and that's put me back at the beginning of this chapter. Um, it's also given me a random selection of guns here to play with, and so, well, I guess we'll just start from here and see how it goes. The other screw-up uh, um, before we've even started um, is that I've somehow managed to lose the commentary from this episode as well, so uh, I'm doing this after the fact, so I'll um, I'll see how it goes as I just watch it. Um, now, having already played through this bit, so I'm already a little bit prepared for some of the stuff that happens in this episode uh, from the end of the last one, like the train going rather too quickly here and barreling off down to the distance, which is how I was able to jump off it like that. Um, and it also means I'm going to be being a bit more um, reactive than normal to, to what goes on on the screen because I don't know what I'm thinking and what I'm planning to do. Um, I have vague memories of it, but it was um, actually a few days ago that I recorded this as well. So it's, there's going to be a bit of guesswork here, um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. At the moment, it looks like I'm actually remembering to use the Magnum for long-range shooting. That makes a nice change. Well done there. Remembering to reload as well. That's also quite an achievement. <laughs> There doesn't seem to be all that much extra to do up here, though, which isn't surprising, because I'm pretty sure that isn't meant to be so much a, um, a trap that you avoid, as just you get thrown off the edge there um, because you're not expecting it to happen. Um, there's a random lay. I don't know how that... L there's always random limbs everywhere in this game. Ooh, and a lathe as well. <laughs> Shame you don't get to play with it. I like playing with lathes. Um, not to get the chance very often. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so you're probably meant to just go barreling straight off the edge here and uh, go s straight down there and, and end up reacting as I did in the last episode, essentially. But since I'm up here now, let's um, have a look around and see what we can find. A bit of ammunition, of course. And we'll take the... Um Oh. Now that is a trap, so clearly it's to make sure that if you do happen to um, escape cunningly and get off the train, you just get dumped in the bottom of it, in the water anyway. But let's find out. Let's um, carry on as we were. This looks very familiar. I think we uh, we all remember this area from the, uh, from the last episode and how there wasn't anywhere to go. <laughs> so let's carry on with the swimming around and just grabbing all the stuff as we, as we can. Now this part's... hopefully I'll get through this reasonably quickly. As, as far as I remember, it didn't take me very long to remember what I'd been doing last time I was here. There's that physics puzzle again, and um, and the train that I nearly rode in on. So, have a quick look around. Pretend we don't already know what's going on. And yes, as before, we'll go around and gather some of these uh, floaty barrels. Presumably these sink quite so well because the HEV suit is really heavy. And so it's, it, maybe it's got its own sort of buoyancy tanks like a submarine has, so that's how it, how it swims so well. It's, a, it's quite capable of blowing air in and out and maintaining its buoyancy even when you're dragging a, um, a massive plastic barrel full of air underwater. I don't know, I'm making this up as I go along, but um, otherwise I suspect it wouldn't be quite this easy to sink down there like that. Okay. A little bit more physics in there. Let's go and see if we can find any more. I'm also still quite impressed at just how long the HEV suit can hold its breath for. I mean, I don't know. I guess a hazardous environment suit should have its own air supply, and to be honest, it should probably be the other way around. I should be um, unimpressed that it can't supply you with air for significantly longer. But maybe there's some sort of filtration system I can. Anyway, that's up for floating now. Let's have a look and see if there's anything more down here we can get before we carry on. No, I think that's just fallen in and he's going to make sure we can't go that way. Given they've left all these 
these boxes here. It feels rude not to open them, just in case, you know. Sometimes there's some shotgun ammo or something useful. Like that. Of course, now that's lifted up, we can't get out of the water there. So, uh, fortunately, I think we um, already found the way out earlier. Yeah, so it goes convenient steps. And now that the... Um, Oh yes, for last time there were some soldiers up there, but I've killed them all this time, of course. Now the physics puzzle is done, we can just hop across the gap there, and carry on. Wake up the zombies. <laughs> I have to say, these are a lot easier to deal with than ones in seven days to die. Maybe if I could find a crowbar in that game, it would help. Hooray! Grenades for the submachine gun. I do like the submachine gun grenades because whilst most modern games have... Um, no, that's not barnacle. Most modern games allow you to throw a grenade with your off hand while you're still holding your gun. So you don't need to switch and try and find them. Um, Half-Life was early enough on that the grenades are a separate weapon. But the submachine gun also has an underslung grenade launcher. Ooh, beer. Can't break the beer. Disappointing. Um... Yeah, so the um, submachine gun also has the underslung grenade launcher, and that's very useful if you can remember that right-click is grenade, not um, zoom. I think that's the second time I've fallen for that trap, but I don't think you have any choice. I think you have to go down in here. And then have a look around, see if it's the same sort of puzzle, and no, there doesn't seem to be a physics thing in this one. But, uh, where do we go from here? Why do we go to the box, of course. Tunnel, as I remember. Oh, yeah, there's a truck in this as well. Um, and you almost worry that maybe I shouldn't have been collecting those boxes. Oh no, got through with 40% of air left. That's not too bad. Yeah, so I wonder if the, um, the boxes might. The boxes feel like there should be some sort of adaptive difficulty system. You know, the sort of thing that's where um, if you're doing badly, you get extra um, power ups and things. But because I've got basically full health, I've got full health and I've got mostly full armour, and I think I've got a decent amount of ammunition. I'm not sure exactly what I started with on when the, um, when the game loaded. Um, so you'd think that would be um, a way of ad adjusting it if you're doing badly. And here I was, I was trying to decide which way to go, because there's two different routes you seem to be able to take from here. Um, I think I eventually bottled out of that one, because it was a bit too underwater, <laughs> and I was worried about my air supply. And also, I wasn't sure which was the way and which was the sort of the go looking for bonuses. Now, this bit bits me in the uh, in the last episode, so I'm, I'm still playing catch up here. Um, but I've learned how to put the fire out without sort of blowing yourself up now, which is nice. It does feel a little bit cheap to be doing this again, but as I said, it's not actually my fault, and my memory is not very good. So you know, I've only got vague ideas of what's going next. Oh yes, this was the, um, the scientist getting eaten by the giant psychotic fish creature. Um, yeah, I don't want to go in there. That doesn't look safe. Let's uh, deal with the scientists though, because they're always... It's always funny when you um, miss one and forget about it and accidentally get eaten on your way to, to go and get, try and get something else. But let's try to avoid that, shall we? That shark cage looks... Uh, worrying, as if I'm probably going to end up in it at some point. You can tell I've got to that stage sort of stage in the game, though, where their ammunition is, um, or at least feels, cheap. There's always plenty of it around, so I don't mind sort of wasting half a dozen bullets on each of these barnacles. I say wasting, I think using. It's not really wasting. It stops me getting my face eaten by them. Uh, jumping time. <laughs> oh, nope, we're running into the walls all the time. Now this is another one of the things where I suspect a modern game would have, yes it would have the detail on the wall to make it look like it was 3D and sticking out, 
but it would have some sort of smooth covering over it, so when you try and run and jump across there, there's no way of getting caught on it. However, this is not a modern game. <laughs> Despite the uh, occasional quirky physics and the and the fact that it was released quite recently, um, it's re it really is a remake of an older game. So there's quite and it does show in, in places, as I occasionally point out. Did you see it? They claim it was hauled from the Challenger Deep, but I'm positive that beast hasn't swam in terrestrial waters until a week ago. He really doesn't look cool at... There is a tranquilizer gun in the shark cage, but I'm not sure it would work on this particular species. You are more than welcome to try your hand. He doesn't look that worried, given that one of his colleagues has just been dragged into the water and eaten by a giant sea creature, fish monster, demon, alien, I don't know what to call it, thing. Oh well, grab some um, juice for the suit before we... Uh, no doubt go in there and have to deal with that thing. Well, I think it's rather stimulating, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, stimulating, that's a good word. Now this feels awkwardly designed. The um, I mean, it makes sense due to you know physics and stuff that the, ca that the cage is hanging right underneath the winch, but it makes it feel rather difficult to be sure that you're going to fall the right way if you jump onto it, and you're not going to just completely miss and land in the water all by yourself. Um, so yeah, I was looking around to see if I could find a way to adjust the position of the um, cage before I jumped in. Um, so this was this this is the crossbow that I've been desperately waiting for. Yes, thank you. <laughs> desperately waiting for for ages because um, I really wanted to have some sort of weapon with actual zoom on it um, and a slightly more effectiveness than the um, than the Magnum. Um, this isn't quite the circumstances I expected to get it in. If I'm being quite honest. Where is? It? Oh, there it is over there. <laughs> that looks slightly glitchy. Um, Let's see if we can shoot it, shall we? Oh no, it's moving. Ow! Oh, and drowning as well. It's a good combination. Oop, one hit. Yes. Did that get it? I can't tell. Is that still moving? Or is that unconscious already? I think that might have been it. I think I might have got it. I didn't realise the um, crossbow is quite that powerful, actually. Uh, but I've only got like 12 bolts for it, so let's not waste them. I wonder how many of the weapons actually work underwater. Maybe that's another reason I was given a crossbow. And that actually makes sense to work underwater. Although now I think about it, Quite a lot of explosives actually work underwater, don't they? Because they have their own. Because they, um, as, as explosives, they trigger and go off far too fast to be able to get enough oxygen. So they they have oxidising agents built in, I think. Is that right? I'm pretty sure I've heard that you can throw fireworks in water and they'll still explode. And the old traditional um, redneck hob um, hobby of dynamite fishing does kind of imply that you don't need actual air for. Um, for explosives. So, yeah, may maybe the guns could sort of be okay. That said, on the, on the flip side, I've seen enough videos of um, guns being fired into water to know that they're not the, the bullets aren't going to have much um, power if you fire them in, in, through through water any any great distance. I guess that's another advantage of the uh, crossbow bolts actually, because they're um, going to be significantly heavier. They could probably go a lot further underwater. And maybe only a slightly larger cross-sectional area. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. Can you tell? I'm also not really quite sure I'm supposed to be going. <sighs> for a minute there, I thought you were done for. Now with that beast killed, you can continue forward. 
Um, thank you. Are you going to unlock something for me then? Or are you just going to stand there staring at <laughs> Once through the flooded portion of the facility, you will practically be upon the Lambda Lab's doorstep. Oh good. Only a little bit more flooded facility mm. to get through then. Presumably, having defeated the giant fish demon, I need to carry on through the water. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't need to go in there in the first place, except for the sort of, you know, boss fight. So, presumably, there's another way to go from down here somewhere. Just need to find it. All these doors seem to be closed. There's a big red light on that one. Oh, and a, and a twiddly handle. Ah, there we go. More air before we go through. I'm impressed that door opened actually underwater with the with the uh, water pressure against it. I'm sure that's one of those things that's supposed to be almost impossible. Like if you if you fall into a lake, if you drive into a lake, or and uh, your so your car's underwater. Um, let's try and find some air. Uh, then you're, then you're supposed to smash the windows or something like that to allow the pressure inside and outside to equalise a bit, and or to, uh, for the water out to be able to rush into the car as you try and push the door open. Otherwise, the pressure against it is going to um, mean you, you're not going to be able to, no matter how hard you push. Okay, oh, hey, another crossbow. In case one isn't enough, I suppose it can both. Uh, some more ammunition, anyway. Is this where I just came from? Yeah, it must be. The barnacles are all dead. At least the door's probably open now. This will be another of those sort of things where, in order to make you feel like you're in a real place, the um. You have corridors, and you can unlock a door and go back to where you were before, because otherwise people aren't going to go that sort of the long way around. And yeah, occasionally I'll save some ammunition when I find barnacles. Unlike some games of its era, I don't think Half-Life keeps a kill count and then tells you how how well you did at the end as a percentage. Why is that barrel rolling? Is there someone down there pushing things about? I don't see anyone. The direct approach to barnacles. The shotgun is really wonderful against them. <laughs> and um, a lot of the other enemies as well. Especially at that sort of range. And shotgun ammo does seem to be fairly widely available now. Like I say, the shotgun is lethally effective against a lot of the enemies as long as you can get close enough to use it properly. <laughs> Damn 40 cons tele teleporting in that one. <laughs> Open pit. At least they've put handrails in. This isn't Star Wars tech. I think I've already, actually, I think I've already made that joke in the series. Sorry about that. They're not very good handrails though, are they? <laughs> You ever get the feeling that you probably don't want to go in the water? Now, the problem with the Vortigaunts is that they don't seem to get stunned when you shoot them. Most most enemies, if they're sort of charging up a big shot like that and you're shooting them in the head, it'll at least distract them a little bit. But no, not these guys. Far too tough for that. Oop. Ceiling's falling in. There's an office up there. Nice. I wonder what this area was. There's a lot of sort of glowiness around here. What am I doing? Why am I going in the water? That seems like a bad idea. There's a giant fish. 
do not want fish. Oh, do not want fish. <laughs> I don't know why I jumped in the water then, to be quite honest with you. It just seemed like, I think it's probably just my liking of exploring. Um, ooh, that's a hit. Apparently this one needs more than one though. Obviously, maybe the previous one was weakened a bit by being in a smaller tank. Do you think this is like goldfish? They um they sort of grow to fit their tank, and this one's got much much bigger. Ooh, and deep, and it's got a friend as well. Ooh, that was a terrible shot. Good dodge though. Right, it appears to be two hits to take out one of those then normally. Um, and that's taken out nearly all my armour. That sucks. I wonder if there's anything good down here. Windows and catwalks. Does this just go on down for out? Is this literally a bottomless pit? I think it's at least bottomless enough that I don't have enough air to explore it. And I'm not sure I've got enough air to get back out again now, actually. Um, apparently you swim downwards faster than you swim upwards. That's um, a bit harsh. <laughs> At least I'm pretty sure I went down faster than I went up. Anyone agree? Um, or is it just my imagination? It could be my imagination. I don't know. Anyway, here's the way out. Let's try it again, but with a bit less fail, shall we? I mean... At least we've made the water safe now, but... What was that? No, really, what was that? I think at this point, I was sort of optimistically hoping that somewhere in this place there'd be something useful to pick as a, a, some, some sort of nice pickup to make up for the fact how of um, having, having had to fight those two critters. But... It looks like basically a not featureless bottomless pit, but there doesn't seem to be anything useful down there. We interrupt this episode to bring you your regularly scheduled rant about the ladders in the source engine. Let's try taking a run up, see if that helps. There we go, that's better. Now, something electrical going on there. That worries me. So let's. No, let's not do that. That was not the plan. There's an easier way out. There we go. Somewhere new to explore. <laughs> Despite looking like a ladder, that's. Oh, it's... Oh. And another one. So. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, the um, aliens teleporting in thing is... A little irritating, I will admit. And I understand it makes the game a bit more interesting when occasionally you think you're safe and then something happens. And yeah, it gives you a little bit of warning because you've got the teleporting noise and the flashing lights and so on. And that one wasn't too bad because it just meant I had to keep shooting down this way because they're in more or less the same place. So I can kind of forgive it. But it feels, I don't know, it still feels a little bit cheap. Especially when you're concentrating on something else, like smashing up boxes. You know, important things. Ooh, big green button. Green button. <laughs> that looks like, I don't know, some kind of really, really obvious trap. What is it supposed to be? What is that actually useful for? Nice. 
apparently I'm expected to use the crossbow a bit more than I have been. And ammunition is always welcome as well, of course. Alright, so here we are back down at the, um, the fisher pond. Uh, yep, full of crossbow ammunition. I'm not going over there, that'll zap me. <laughs> I've seen that sort of trap before. So, yeah, back up to the um, unconvincing... I don't know, it says generator on the wall. I don't quite see how that's a generator, but it is also quite clearly a jumping puzzle. Um, and I suspect it might be a tricky one. So let's investigate how to how to quick save first, shall we? Because much fun as it is doing the sort of the running round and round, having the doing the split screen thing when everything goes horribly wrong repeatedly, it gets a little wet, uh, wearisome. Also, jumping skills not that great. Take two. I suppose I could have just quick quick loaded. I suppose, but mm, it feels a bit. Again, feels a little bit cheap. To get a bubble lip. There we go. Uh oh, spawned in. And jump and fail again. What we got up there? Oh, it's just a head grab. That's not so bad. Although, if I had managed to manage the jump rather than uh, falling in. It would have been a bit of a surprise to encounter it there on the other side, and, uh, and not a welcome one. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was nearly graceful. Try again. You know, if I wanted to play a jumping, if I wanted to play a platformer, I'd probably play a platformer, not a first person shooter. So, I play a first person shooter because I want to shoot things and to be fair there hasn't been an enormous amount of platform in this game it's not, it's not that and this isn't really that difficult I'm just making rather funny weather for a bit so, I don't know due to suck I suppose there we go getting used to these sort of traps, I think. That definitely didn't take me all that much by surprise. I even had the right weapon out. That never happens. Yeah, the head crabs are nice enough to give you a chance, time to uh, get weapons when they, uh, when they come crawling towards you, because they move pretty slowly. Forty on the other hand. Oh. oh, come on, what was that? Shoot straight. <laughs> One left. Have I remembered? Yes, I have. <laughs> oh, for what? That was terrible. <laughs> And from what I remember, the first one, I think I I hit the fire button while it was finishing the reload off, which is why it fired after I ducked, ducked back around behind the corner. Um, so that wasn't entirely my fault. The rest of it, though, I have no excuses. That was just some terrible, terrible shooting, and now I need some more shotgun ammunition. <laughs> I don't know how I did that badly. Hello, can I come in please? That's a nice HEV suit charge you've got there. Gordon Freeman, it is you, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is. The science team has been tracking your progress with the Black Mesa security system. Unfortunately, so has the military. <laughs> That's a really that precise suit of map. That is full of tracking devices. Still, it's better than going naked in this place. It's cold in there, so you'll have to hurry. 
It could sap your suit power in a matter of moments. If you're bent on reaching the Lambda Complex, then you'll want to keep to the older industrial areas where the security system is full of holes. It's worked for me, so far. I just can't get over that I've been tracking my progress on, yeah, on that screen, on that, basic on a map of the world. <laughs> oh, it's cold in here, it's cold in here. And, yeah, I'm getting distracted by head cap and not noticing how quickly my, um, arm is going down. No, you can't fit through that gap. You've got shoulders. It's cold in here. There's a vorticon. Why are why are the aliens frozen to death? That's my question. A vorticon really that proof against um, the cold? Way out, way out, way out. Slightly, <laughs> slightly too slow. Ah, <laughs> it's going so well as well. Right, take two, and shoot the headcrabs quickly this time. I was going to say, don't worry about ammunition, but we do worry about stopping moving. We know about the vorticons this time, so shotgun at the ready. And try and actually hit them. And not let them hit you. Oh, there's another headcrab. Oh dear, this doesn't look good. Oh, made it. I think. Yes, made it just with a whole 10% health left. Great. This bodes well for the next part of the um, game. Creeping around in the uh, air vents. Here we go. What's down here? Freedom of a sort. This must be the older parts of the facility that scientist is referring to. I guess, I mean, things don't look that new and shiny. It just looks sort of, well, vaguely industrial. So let's um, see what we can find, I guess. That said, I have now been playing for about half an hour. So I think that's a good time to call it an episode. As ever, thank you for watching. And we'll um, see if I can find myself some much needed health quite fairly quickly. And uh, carry on from there. I hope to see you next time. And um, I hope you're enjoying the series. Do let me know what you think of this um, afterwards commentary as opposed to sort of in the moment commentary. I'd be um, interested to know how it how it compares. And um, yeah, see you next time. Thanks for watching.